Hey everyone, it's Adam. Happy New Year to 2026. Today we're going to talk about the new updates in Mix Effect 2.4.0, which was released on the App Store this week. Let's get started. So we're going to cover three things. We're going to cover the new features in Mix Effect 2.4.0, improvements and bug fixes. Let's start with new features. So we have support for some new switchers from Blackmagic Design, audio improvements, bus mapping, which is a new feature on certain ATEM switchers, and new switcher settings. So let's start off with support for new switchers. So Blackmagic recently released the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO G2 and the ATEM 4 Me Constellation 4K+. Plus. You can see their screenshots uh, down below. And uh, these are just reaching customers' hands just in the past few months. And they're really good uh, devices. In fact, I have an ATEM Mini Extreme ISO G2 on loan from Blackmagic Design. I have to return it later this week, but I found it to be a very capable device. Um, it has eight HDMI inputs, but three auxiliary outputs. Uh, has Thunderbolt, so you can do fill and key from like a Mac or a PC. It has instant replay integration with DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it's a fantastic thing. I wish I had one of these devices. Uh, but I have an ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, and I also have an ATEM Mini Pro and an ATEM 2ME Constellation HD. But if I didn't have one of those and I was just getting started in video production, I would seriously consider the G2. It really is a, a powerhouse device. Uh, and I'm going to miss it when I have to return it later this week. All right. So the other thing that we're doing is audio changes. So we've added uh, a couple of switcher panels an audio view only and a video follows audio switcher panel. So let's go do a demo on my iPad over here. So you can see my iPad running here and I'm running the USB multi view. And we're going to switch over to the audio view only switcher page. And you see I've added two panels, the video follows audio and the uh, audio view only. So the audio view only shows a very small, compact, view of all your on air or audio follows video audio channels. So any uh, audio, sorry, audio channel. So any audio channel that is currently off will not be displayed in this display. Um, so it keeps things very, very small. And the video follows audio just lets you turn on video follows audio. So you click this and you can see this current status of video follows audio. Orange means it's on and active. Red means it's currently running a trigger and gray means that it's off. So if you use Video Follows Audio a lot, and you want to kind of uh, just have it run in the background while you're on the switcher page, you can just add that and you don't need to look at the uh, audio channels themselves. So in the past before, if, um, <coughs> excuse me, if you were doing uh, audio fo Video Follows Audio from the switcher page, you would add the audio panel, let's just add that here. And you'd basically get all the audio channels. But on switchers like the ATEM Mini Extreme, uh, G2, which has Maddie, you're going to see like a lot of audio. Uh, you're going to see all the, the ones from the HDMI inputs, the uh, two um, XLR inputs, and all those Maddie inputs. In fact, I can switch over to the G2, which is right here. So I'm going to connect to this one and take a look at this. We have the audio panel um, view only right here. And we see these are the ones that are active. But if I went to the, uh, let's just create a new page and then I'm going to clear these all out and I'm going to add the audio panel right here. You know, there's a lot of audio channels right there and click. This one is kind of like <coughs> a little big. Uh, I'll have to take a look at that uh, later. So certainly a lot of audio channels. You may not want that, um, so on your switcher page, so you could just take a look at this audio view only, uh, very compact way. And then the video follows audio toggle and also work on um, the kind of the horizontal layouts and also on the vertical sidebar here for a nice, quick, easy little checkbox that you can check to turn it on and off. <clears throat> so let's switch back to the constellation. And we will edit this page and remove that audio. Just delete that. There it goes away. And I'll switch back to my USB uh, view only. Actually, I'll go to the USB uh, multi-view one. <clears throat> if you haven't had a chance to use the USB view on your Mac or your iPad, I definitely recommend it. So get the multi-view out from your ATEM, 
and then plug it in using a USB capture card in your iPad or your Mac, and you can basically interact with the interface uh, using your fingers, touch. It's really quite convenient. All right, let's talk about some of the other things in the audio section. So I've also added the ability for you to store your video files audio settings locally instead of on iCloud Drive. Now, why would you do that? So <clears throat> some people uh, don't have iCloud Drive enabled on their devices. So uh, you, there are some problems where you could actually couldn't even store the VFA settings. They would just get reset every single time. Uh, so now <clears throat> you can choose to store those locally instead of on iCloud Drive. Plus I've added the ability to import and export your VFA settings. So let's go back to the iPad again and see where those are enabled. So if we go to mix effect settings and you go to automations, you'll see a new toggle here called store VFA settings in iCloud. So if you check this, uh, and this is on by default because the default is to store it on iCloud, uh, your VFA settings for all your switches will be stored on iCloud. But if you uncheck this, it will now save it on the local device. So the on my iPad, on my iPhone, uh, or on your Mac. So you can go over to your switcher settings down here and you can see the Video Falls Audio has the export and import buttons. So if you tap those, those will bring up the standard dialog box, which, which you can use to export your VFA file and then import it. So if you have a VFA file that you use with a lot of switchers and you wanna kinda of quickly uh, copy your VFA settings from switcher to switcher, uh, you can do that. Or mix effect to mix effect, you can do that with this import VFA file. Okay, the next thing is, we go back to the presentation here, is USB view now supports audio pass-through and remote web view supports toggling on and off audio. Let's take a look at this. So again, USB view is only available on iPad OS and Mac OS. That's because iOS doesn't support uh, the UVC cameras plugged directly in via the USB cable. I really wish that they would add that. That would be make for a great feature to see your multi-view on your iPhone, but you can't do that using the remote web view. So let's go back here and you'll see now there's a little sound button that you can push to turn on the audio. And this will play back the audio that's coming in from the USB uh, capture card. So I'll turn that off there. And it also exists in the remote web view. So this is using Video Ninja uh, to stream basically a my multi-view from a Mac to my iPad or my iPhone. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on Mac OS, um, but I've added a new feature in Mac OS, or actually in all the things, where if you tap this, you can open this in a default browser. And this will just open up Safari or Chrome to the Video Ninja URL, and you can use that to kind of monitor uh, your multi-view. Uh, although, unfortunately, on the Mac, you won't be able to touch it because it's not running in Mix Effect, it's running in Safari web browser. But here you can mute and unmute the, the audio coming in. Uh, note that if you have the uh, multi-view switcher turned on, turned off, which is this, you actually have a little mute and unmute button here too. So just keep that in mind. But this is with the multi-view switcher on, so I can actually use my finger here to touch and switch input. So if I want to switch to the iPad, I can just tap and it'll do a cut. I can double tap and it'll do a transition just like that. Okay, so next up we have See, what do we have next? Bus mapping. So bus mapping is a new feature that only exists on certain ATEM switchers, such as the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO G2 and the Constellation HD and 4K series. So what is bus mapping? So put simply, you can configure your mix effect bus, not to be confused with my app mix effect, but mix effect bus, and you can have a follower. So you can assign a follower as another mix effect bus so in the case of the ATEM 2 me Constellation HD that I have, you can have ME2 follow ME1, or you can have any of the auxiliary outputs follow something that happens on ME1. So as an example, let's say I have a, a bus mapping setup such that when I go to the super source on ME2, I wanna show color bars. And then on output six on my Constellation, I wanted to show color one. Now you wouldn't do this in normally, but this is just an example. So I'm gonna show you how to configure that in Mix Effect. So we come back to the iPad and you'll see that there's this new <coughs> section called bus mapping. And if 
bus mapping doesn't appear here, you can always go down to your Squisher connection and click or tap the reset layout button and then it will, all your things will come back, okay? Alternatively, you can find bus mapping over in settings, in settings, bus mapping. Now again, not all ATEM switchers support bus mapping. So for instance, if you had an ATEM Mini Pro here, I'm gonna connect to my ATEM Mini Pro, there's no bus mapping because ATEM Mini Pro doesn't support bus mapping. But the ATEM Extreme G2 does support bus mapping. So you can see that right here. I have no buses enabled and ATEM Mini Extreme ISO G2 only has one mix effect bus, ME1. So we're gonna go back to my constellation here and we see that I've already defined uh, two bus mappings, one for ME2 to follow ME1 and one for output six to follow ME1. So first I'm gonna remove these, remove this bus and remove this bus. This is what you see when you have no bus mappings enabled. So I'm just gonna add them again, like this and like this. And then over here in the options menu, I'm gonna say show map sources. So you see here, when SuperSource goes on to a program, <coughs> excuse me, I want to show color bars on ME2. And when SuperSource goes on the program on ME1, I want output six to show color one. So let's see this in action here. Uh, let's go to, this is a good one. So I'm in remote, actually, let's go back to USB view. I have a little more, few more buttons I can push there. We see, uh, I'm actually in the super source right now. So you see super source is highlighted right now. And I have uh, ME2 showing the color bars and output six showing the, the blue color for color one. But if I cut over to the iPad directly, not in super source, you'll see what happens. You'll see that ME2 is now what's showing what's on program. So it's showing the uh, ME2 and then output six is showing uh, also what's on program, which is the iOS. But now if I cut back to here, you'll see that the follower ME2 switched to color bars because now I'm super source and output six cuts to the color one. So that's the example of how bus mapping works. Now, Blackmagic gave a couple of examples in their documentation for bus mapping. Uh, give me examples such as, just say you had localized titles in running in different media players and you wanted to, change them depending on, um, you know, you switch to like program and then you change the titles and then the titles are, are localized. This would work well with a an ATEM that had say four media players um, where you can have like four different type of looks. So output uh, one, two, three, and four could have like English and then three other languages for your localized titles. And then when you cut to that camera angle, it switches um, say like an output. <clears throat> uh, for a device like, um, an ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, or maybe even the ATEM 2ME, you could have, say, a different look for like the monitors that are outside in like the display hall. <coughs> and when you go to a certain thing, maybe the outputs, um, output number six that goes out to like display monitors would show something different when you're on program for a camera one. So it's a very powerful feature. I don't personally see how I would use it right now. But with like all things, I need to talk to some video professionals and see how they're using bus mapping and see how I can incorporate that into my workflow. It's similar a lot to the audio routing features that was added to the ATEM Constellation models and also present in the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, uh, where you can map different audio sources to the different outputs. So I encourage you, if you have those switchers, upgrade to the latest firmware and check out bus mapping. Next, we're gonna take a look at switcher settings. Now, some of these switcher settings don't exist on all ATEM switchers. So depending on which one you have, you may or may not see these options. So I've added support for altering the output loudness metering controls. I've seen these on the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO G2. Network discovery on some of the more modern ATEM Mini lines. Uh, color space and HDR override controls. I see those mostly on the SDI models like the Constellation. Uh, option to disable timecode on SDI outputs, another constellation type thing or a switcher that has SDI. Tally override controls. And finally, checkboxes for toggling plug-in power and phantom power for those switchers that have analog microphone inputs. Let's take a look, because I have three switchers right here. So we're looking at the Constellation HD 2ME right now, and we see disable timecode for all SDI outputs. We see the color and HDR override right here. Uh, analog outputs does not have any phantom power. Um, we see the bus mapping and the tally over here. Now, if I log into the G2, 
we see enable switcher to be discovered on the network. And let's scroll down, analog inputs. We have abilities to set the phantom power for the two XLR inputs that are on the G2. And uh, we have the bus mapping, as I mentioned that before. And we have tally controls here. Uh, because there's only one ME on the G2, you only see one of these. But on the Constellation 2ME, you see two ME tallies because there's two MEs. And finally, on the A10 Mini Pro, if we'll connect to that, we can take a, look, take a look at settings. We don't have the network discovery. We don't have bus mapping. We don't have tally controls or color space HG or override. But over an analog input, we do have the ability to enable plug-in power when the analog input is the microphone. So we have that. I can just click that and check that. So let's switch back to the ATEM 2 me constellation and take a look at the presentation, see what's next. So improvements. So before MADI audio sources were displayed as like MADI 1, MADI 2, MADI 3, but I've split, um, changed that to be more representative of how the MADI interfaces actually are. So you have MADI's 1 slash 2, 3 slash 4, 5 slash 6. And when you do the split audio, then it becomes MADI 1, MADI 2. Uh, Thunderbolt and Thunderbolt key sources are now supported in the multi-view switcher, the remote web view, and the USB view panels. Left and right channels are displayed correctly in the VU meters when split audio is enabled in the multi-view switcher panel. Uh, there's some improvements to the USB view panel. The auxiliary section now shows uh, the output name when the all tab is selected. I'm going to show this to you real quick. So we go to the auxiliary and we go to all. You actually see that what the titles are. Otherwise, it's kind of a little hard. You might have to look at this yellow thing, um, but this is only showing you the short label for the auxiliary output, not the full label. And also on the G2, this is more of a bug fix, but on the G2, if you go to the auxiliary section, uh, before it was putting the webcam on the last part and the Thunderbolt was uh, just called AUX4. But now it's actually the correct order. So if you click this, this is actually the webcam output, and this, this is the Thunderbolt output. Uh, so that's fixed in the G2. <clears throat> and we also have um, combined HyperDex panels. Remember the last selected HyperDeck, so you don't have to keep switching back between one and two. You go to a different section and come back to the switcher section, and then you have to tap two again. And I said before, the remote web view URL can be open in the default browser, which is useful on Mac OS. Or if you're running an iPad now with the multi-window support, if you didn't want to have, um, if you just wanted to monitor the web view kind of like in a browser, you can do that now today. Some bug fixes. So SuperSource preset exports now works when iCloud Drive is disabled. So before if you had iCloud Drive disabled and you tried to export uh, from the menu, nothing happens. So now the proper dialog box appears. Uh, some people were saying that the macro report record panel will disappear randomly while recording a macro. And so now that doesn't happen. Uh, on the G2, audio tally indicators now appear correctly for the XLR inputs. Uh, I mentioned the correct labeling on the auxiliary ports on the G2 and some bug fixes. So a freezing issue was resolved in the multi-view switcher panel on iOS 26 and iPad OS 26. There's a crash I prevented at startup uh, with the super source, and there's assorted bug fixes and improvements. So those are all the new features, improvements, and bug fixes in MixEffect 2.4.0. It still supports iOS 15 and higher. Uh, I said in the MixEffect 2.3.0 release that this would probably be that would probably be the last update that supported iOS 15. But uh, there are enough bug fixes that I wanted to kind of throw into the I, this release, the 2.4.0 release, um, that I wanted to get in for iOS 15, 16, uh, and 17 users. But uh, probably the next version, you know, knock on wood, uh, may drop support for those older devices. But that's a, a topic for another day and another video. I hope you've enjoyed this one, uh, detailing everything that's new in MixEffect 2.4.0. Go get it from the App Store and happy switching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.